John here. So I got a bunch of these switches sitting around my, my shop from an old project and I'd like to use them. I don't have a uh, footprint in KiCad that matches this, which is drawn up in this corner here. First of all, I guess the switch is a, a double pull, double throw switch. It's a momentary contact. You can see there's a spring in the switch in the mechanical drawing. Its relaxed position is drawn here. Pins two and five are the pivot, and it goes between you know two and one or two and three, depending on how I push it, as well as five and four and five and six. Here is the drawing of what the PCB layout for the footprint is supposed to look like. 2.50 on center in both dimensions, and this means it has a one millimeter drill hole that you need for the leads. So how do we do this? All right. Fire up KeyCAD. Uh, let's make a new project. Uh, I don't want to mess with my existing one, so I'll create another test project. 2045-test or something. All right. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the symbols that are already in here. Remember, I loaded the DigiKey library. And it turns out there is a di double pull, double throw switch, not a relay right there. There's a switch in the library already, so there's a nice schematic symbol for it. And this matches this drawing right down here. The um, two be goes between one and three, and five goes between four and six. It's drawn here in its relaxed position. That's pretty nice. I don't have to you know draw another symbol. This, of course, is for a different part that is a different footprint. I can go in here and delete all the DigiKey fields and update them with what I want, if I would like to. Normally I would. I'll leave that for you. Uh, the footprint I know is wrong. This is a surface mount part. And the part for mine is actually this. If you search for that in DigiKey, you can buy one of these for yourself. Paste in here. And OK. So now I've modified, you know, used the symbol. I didn't modify the symbol. Modified my schematic to be uh, useful with the existing symbol. Now I'd like to be able to pick a footprint, but I don't have one yet. And I don't even have a library. So let's create a new library and put that footprint in there. This is designed a little bit different th than the symbol library. Let's look and see where we're going before we get there. This is the directory within which I put my John's Basement uh, symbol library right in here. I'll also put a John's Basement footprint library. Now, unlike the symbol library where you have this one pair of files here that hold all the symbols, this is a backup file that get even ignores. Uh, the footprint, JB footprint library, is going to be a directory and within which there will be a separate file for every single footprint. So it's a little different philosophy. Clearly written by different people than did the symbol editor. There's also a chicken and egg problem. You can't really create an empty library with this tool. Uh, technically, it's just a directory. I could just make dear a directory and theoretically there is my library. And actually, you could do that, except there's a note somewhere about some versions of KiCad, old ones presumably, that will crash if you add a footprint library that doesn't have any footprints in it. So, all right, so do it in the right order. Um, the saving and creating libraries is, is blurred out right now because it wants you to have a footprint to put in it in order to create it. So let's create a footprint. The name of the footprint will be the name of the part that I'm making it for. Let's zoom out here. Now, it doesn't have anything really going on yet, but otherwise it's a footprint, logically. Now these are lit up, so I can say create a new library and save the current footprint in there. I don't want to put it in my existing project, so I'm going to navigate over to where I keep my libraries for John's basement, and I'm going to say good. Pick this directory where I put the other stuff, open. Now in there, I'm going to say, what all, what do I want to call it? JB footprint. I got JB symbol, JB footprint, and it'll add a dot pretty if I don't put it in there myself. Now I hit OK. All right, so what happened over here, right? This was what is before, and here's what it is after. It created this directory, and in that directory is this footprint and that's what I called my first footprint and as I add more to this there'll be more files in there so that's all there is to it 
to creating a footprint library with a footprint in it. Now let's make this footprint useful and let's make sure that the footprint library is added to this list here. And it's not. Unlike the symbol library, which automatically added itself to the foot to its library table when you created it, footprints don't do that. Another interesting um, uh, feature of footprint libraries. Okay, so let's go ahead and find it in here. It's in here, and it is in this directory right there. Okay. Hit OK. Now I've added it to the table manually. Again, where the symbol did it automatically, the footprint has to be done manually. So now I've added this to the global project table so any of my projects can use it. So let's get back to the task at hand now that I have a library made. And it has this stub project in here for a footprint. Let's make this into a real footprint. What do I do? Get this over here so I can sort of see it while I'm editing over here at the same time, sort of. All right, so what do we really need to know here? The 250 spacing in the one millimeter hole is pretty straightforward. This is an easy one. All right, first thing we need is the grid. Look at what my grid is set to. I could set my grid to 250, but if I did that, the... Um, and I place, this is how you put a pad down. Just like on a PC board, you're putting, you know, parts and, and wires and down. Here, you're going to put an individual pad down. If I snap the grid to 250, what happens is I have to put one row up of holes here and another row up here. What I'd like to do is center the part on this blue crosshair. I, I can't do that in here. It would be nice if I had a grid that was a 1.25 but I don't have that ability. So the closest thing I have is going to be this, a multiple of 0.25, and then I'll have to just skip multiple uh, grid uh, marks. That's okay. So let's look at how to put these pads down here. Because I want to be 250 on center, if you put the pad right in the crosshair uh, and uh, you look at your dimensions, I'm going to down here, the X and Y rather, okay? you can see where you are uh, in the uh, space of this thing. So I want to be negative 1.25, which is right here. And there's three of them. So this is going to be 250 to the right. So my X is 250 and my Y is 125. That's where I want this pad to go. All right. I click it and it's already ready to do pad 2, which is going to go over here. But before I do pad 2, I just hit escape. Let's edit pad 1 and see what's going on here. The hole size is wrong. I'm going to set the hole size now because what happens is as I go along and placing more pads, I don't want to have to edit every one of them. So in here, if I say make this a 1 millimeter hole, uh, I want to make this to be about a 1.7 in order for this annular ring to be thick enough to be useful. I happen to know that the regular many footprints inside KiCad use one millimeter holes and 1.7 for the pad around the hole. That's a pretty reasonable size. These thingies up here choose whether I want a uh, oval one or rectangular one. For pin one it would be nice to have a rectangular um, shape so that's fine. I'll go ahead and do that. Now if I place another pin the defaults will copy the one that I just sent right there. I'm going to click pin 2 and I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to select it and hit E. Now I'm going to go back to a, a, a circular pad and I'm going to place more circular pads. Now remember I'm at uh, 125 and, neg and now I'm at negative 250 for pin 3. Alright, now in the drawing this is where pin 6 goes. So number pin 4, pad 4 needs to go over here. He has to be at 250, and this time it'll be negative 125. All right, that's what I'm looking at in the X and Y coordinates. So here's pin 5, should be 0 in 1, negative 125, and pin 6 is negative 2.5 and negative 125. Those are the pads for this part. I'm going to control S to save it. 
and it wants to know where to put it. I don't know why it managed to forget, but I'm going to put it in the JB footprint library that I just created down there, and I'm going to hit OK. Presumably, if I hit Save again, Control S, uh, at least it remembered where it's supposed to go, so I don't have to do that every time. All right, so there's a little different philosophy again than the symbol editor, but certainly manageable. So my footprint holes look pretty darn good. Uh, in fact, inside here, just like a PC board, I can hit Alt 3. I can look at the 3D view of this thing, which is not particularly interesting. Uh, there's no surprise there. <laughs> that darn, gall darn, that was lucky. It looks pretty much like it's supposed to look. Now, how do you get the other stuff in there? I'm not going to mess with 3D shapes. Just like the DigiKey library doesn't have them, I don't really want to mess with them myself either. But I would like to put down like the courtyard or some kind of thing on the PC board to let me know uh, on the silk screen how big it is. So when I put down other parts around this thing, I don't have the, you know, I don't accidentally put a resistor so close that it's like underneath, you know, the edge of the switch or something over here. So what am I going to do? I'm going to note that it's 14.7 by 7.3. I'd like to draw this rectangle, but as you can see down here, it's not exactly centered. So how am I going to do all this? It gives you various dimensions. This here is 6.2 millimeters to the right of pin 1 is where the face of this thing is. So let's look down here. Just like in the PC board, if you go over here and I'm over this pin 1, you'll notice this. there's a DX and a DY here and there's an X and a Y over there. If I hover right over pin 1, so I'm at the 2.5 and the 1.24 and I hit the space key. What just happened right there is these DX and DY values just became zeros, while the X and Y still tell you the absolute coordinate from the origin. So now I can go to the right from here, your six point whatever, okay? So I'm at 6.20. I'm on a 2.5 or a 0.25 rather grid spacing. So, and that's fine. I can go over here at 6.25 and I can draw a line oops, that represents the front of this switch. From that line, I can then go to the left, 14.75, because I'm at a 0.25 grid, and I can then draw the back and so on around like this, all right? So let's go ahead and do that. Zoom out a little bit. We know we're, we're, we've, we've zeroed the, the DX on pin 1 here. So if I come over here to... 6.25 that's about where the front of the housing will end so let's go ahead and grab oops let's get on the front silks okay i already did that grab a graphic line from uh over here remember it's 7.3 wide from end to end this is on center so this is really what 3.5 would be half a seven so this is 3.65 is half of this so I'm going to come over here to my 6.25, and then I'm going to come down here to the uh, on the Y position, not the DY. I'm on the Y position now to 3.65. Well, 7.5 will do. And I'm going to click right there, and I'm going to come up here to a positive uh, y value of 3.25 all right so this is where the front of that switch is going to be if i actually go back here and i hit the space bar again notice the dx and dy just went back to zero zero so if i move it to the left now and uh, oops i'm stuck drawing this line let me go ahead and end it right here i'm going to hit escape uh, to get this darn thing on the screen, 14.70. Uh, did I accidentally end up? No, I am at 15 point something here. So it would be nice for it to end right there. This is minus 14.75 from where I hit the space bar. So I can grab this by clicking on it and just drag it over to here. 14.75 is basically close enough. Now I've got these two sides. This should be looking pretty good here. I'm a DY from here okay he's seven away remember this is 7.3 so i probably messed up why am i wrong here this should be down here um i'm at 3.75 down 
This one is 3.25 uh, up. So I didn't do it this one here right. This one needs to go up. So I'm going to grab this. As you saw, me control Z to undo it. Click it once to grab it. Now click here and drag it up. And I'm going up and I'm looking at the Y. I'm at negative 3.5. This is negative 3.75. All right. That's where that should have gone. I select this. I hover over the white dot and I can drag the end up to there. Now when I'm down here, what do I got here? My DY is 7.0. I'm still not quite right. My Y is 3.75. Why is this still wrong? 3.75, 3.75. Oh, because I, and now I need to hit the space bar up here again because I relocated this point, come down here, and now I'm looking good at 7.5, which is close enough to this thing. Um, uh, is that still centered? 3.75, 3.75, yeah, fine. With the grid set to this resolution, that's what I'm going to get. So now I can just simply go over here, and I think... Oop, I'll try and eyeball this that looks about right and then I make this guy over there and hit escape to end it save okay now I have a silk screen line around where the housing of the switch would be now I'd like to go ahead and draw something about this here I can put that in the courtyard or something like that which is fine let's go ahead and draw a courtyard uh, this thing is uh, bigger than the switch anyway so let's draw the courtyard the same as the the silk screen like this all right and hit escape and then out the front, I want to draw this snout of this thing, right? So where the heck is that all about? It goes over 10 and a half from the face of this thing, all right? So what am I going to do? I'm going to zoom in here. It's 10 and a half. How wide is it? It's 2.8. Mm, then we can call that 2.75 if we want to, or 3.0. It's even easier. That means we could go up one and a half and down one and a half. So I'm going to go right here. I'm going to hit the space bar and re-zero my DX and DY again. I'm still in the courtyard. I'll grab my polyline. From here, I'm going to go up. Uh, what did I say I'm going to do? We're going to just draw it at 3 instead of 2.8 because it comes out easier. So I'm going to go up 1.5 right here. Click it. And my DX is at 0. I can come over here 10.5. I'm all, Whoa. Running out of space. If you hit the edges, it, it starts scrolling, right? So I'm looking at the DX right now until I get to 10 and a half. Left click, come down here. I said, remember, my, I'm going to draw this to from up here. It's at one and a half in, in Y, negative one and a half. I'm going to come down here so that I'm at, at uh, positive one and a half. Left click, bring it back to here. Left click, hit escape, and now I'm done. Save. Done. So this is good enough for uh, my footprint. Save. Uh, did I do that right? Okay, and I can now get out of the editor here. I can bury this behind here. Open up the schematic. Hit E to edit this. Go on the footprint. Browse footprints. Keep in mind that I already added this. It'll be on the bottom of your list. There's my one and only footprint. Okay. Save. Yeah, generate a net list. Uh, we forgot to annotate. That's fine. The one only part in here. Open up your PC board. Read in yourself a nice net list. Hit close. And there you've got yourself your wonderful footprint. And again, there's your 3D view right there. So there you got it. You're done. There's your footprint. Start, you know, drawing up some traces and hook it up in a schematic to whatever you're going to do. And this is a pretty useless <laughs> trace, but you know what I mean. So uh, once you uh, draw it in, you're, you're, you're done. You ship this baby out to Osh Park or wherever you want to go. Start making your boards. So let me know what you think about uh, this series in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Bye.